especially Fernando Codá, for invited me to this workshop in geometric analysis. It's a very nice thing to be here in IMPA and also uh, to see some friends. Well, I, I will to talk. I will talk about a differentiable classification result for complete submanifolds. Differentiable classification result. Or complete submanifolds. This result I will present here was motivated by some rich flow convergence results by classical classification results for hypersurfaces and by a, a result published in this year, uh, a result due to Hong Wei Shu and Huan Hu Gu. But before stating the main result of this talk, I, I want to make some considerations. So uh, let M N be uh, an uh, dimensional complete submanifold of an n plus p dimensional Riemannian manifold. say M bar N plus P. Denote by uh, M M G the submanifold with the inducid metric G of the Riemannian metric uh, G bar uh, inducid So, uh, for each point x uh, in the manifold M bar, we choose an, choose an orthonormal local frame field in a such way that uh, the film on the submanifold is tangent to the submanifold. A1 dots A n plus P such that uh, this here is on manifold M bar such that this frame A1 dots A n is tangent to the submanifold and the note by omega 1 dots omega n plus p, the dual frame. Dual frame of this frame here. OK. Rima curvature tensors. The Hima curvature tensors of these manifolds are given in these local frames here by uh, R bar M sum I, J, K, L from 1 to N plus P. Uh, here, we are supposing that uh, is greater than or equal to zero, and n is greater than two uh, of 
Arba, I, J, K, L, ômega I, ou dots, ômega J, ou dots, ômega K, ou dots, ômega L. And, in the same way, A, M, equal to sum, I, J, K, L, from 1 to N, A, I, J, K, L, I, o dots, omega, J, o dots, omega, K, o dots, omega, L. Second fundamental form, second fundamental form of the submanifold in this local frame is given as age equal to sum alpha from n plus 1 to n plus p sum i j from 1 to n of h alpha i j omega i omega j o dots a alpha the second fundamental form and the Riemann curvature tense of the submanifold are related to the Riemann curvature tense of the manifold from the Gauss equation. The Gauss equation is A I J K L equal to A bar I J K L plus the following sum alpha from n plus 1 to n plus p of age alpha i k age alpha j l minus age alpha i l age alpha j k this Gauss equation is it's important because it shows us how extrinsic curvatures and Intrinsic curvatures are related. For example, let me put here some remarks. Suppose that um, this, the Riemann manifold M bar G bar possesses uh, constant curvature. Curvature say uh, C and uh, the scalar curvature of the submanifold is given as the following uh, RG and here is the scalar scalar curvature of uh, the submanifold this scalar curvature is equal to n times n minus 1 times c plus n squared times square of the mean curvature minus the square norm of the second fundamental form. Where? And this definition I'm going to put here is not only in this case here of constant curvature, but in all cases. Okay? S the squared norm of the second fundamental form is given as sum alpha from n plus 1 to n plus p sum ij from 1 to n of h alpha ij squared. And the mean curvature is equal to 1 over n times the length of the following vector, sum alpha from n plus 1 to n plus p, sum i from 1 to n of h alpha i i, h alpha. In here, we note uh, that n square times square of the mean curvature is given by the following sum. n squared times square of the mean curvature is equal to sum 
n plus 1 to n plus p of square y from 1 to n of h of i, I. The square. This equality here will be used in the sequel. Okay, uh, from this equation here, the second relation I will put here is the scalar curvature is less than or equal to n times n minus 1 times square of the mean curvature. The third one is the rich curvature is less than n square times square of the mean curvature over 4. And the last relation I want to put here and uh, an interesting relation is this here. The scalar curvature is greater than or equal to n squared times square of uh, times n minus 2 over n minus 1 times square of the mean curvature plus n minus 1, n minus 2 times c if and only if the squared norm of the second fundamental form is less than or equal to n square over n minus 1 times square of the mean curvature plus 2c. And this last one is interesting because when we are assuming that the dimension is equal to 2, we have that the scalar curvature or the sectional curvature is no negative if and only if uh, this inequality here is true. And then I, I want to remember here some classical classification results for surfaces because uh, in these results, the condition is uh, the sectional curvature to be non-negative, and this is equivalently to this inequality here. The first uh, theorem I want to remember here is a theorem due to Hadamard. Uh, result of 1898. And here we are considering the Riemann manifold M bar, G bar, equal to the Euclidean X space R3 with the canonical metric. Dimension is equal to 2. And the constant C is 0. This theorem here says the following. If um, the sectional curvature is positive and the surface is compact, then the surface is diffeomorphic to the sphere. To this theorem. The second theorem I want to remember here is a theorem that improves this one. Uh, result due to um, Chern. And Leshoff. A uh, result of 19. 57. Uh, it, this result says the following. If the sectional curvature is non-negative and the surface is compact, then the surface is diffeomorphic to this sphere. The same conclusion of this result here of Hadamard. Now, 
uh, here is are two results in the case of compact surfaces. Now, two results in the case of complete surfaces. The first in this case is a uh, result due to Stoker. Uh, result of 1936, I guess. Let, let me see here in my notes. Yes, 36. This theorem says the following. If the sectional curvature is positive and the surface is complete, then the surface is diffeomorphic is 80. Diffeomorphic to the Euclidean X space R2 or to the sphere. And the last theorem I want to remember here is a, a result uh, that improves this result here. This theorem is due to the Carmo. The Carmo and Lima, a result of 1971. And it says the following here. We are considering this surface is complete. If the sectional curvature is negative and positive, positive at one point, then the same conclusion of this theorem here of Stuck. The surface is diffeomorphic to the plane R2 or to the sphere. Okay, here I want to discuss a result like this that improves a result like this, but in a more general setting. Before, let me do one more definition here. This theorem here, due to Manfredo and uh, Du Carmen Lima, uh, was used some locally, locally uh, convex results for hypersurfaces, due to uh, Saxtender and Hage North. We, we will denote by K the sectional curvature of the submanifold and K bar sectional curvature of the manifold M bar G bar. For each point in the manifold X, we set um, K bar minimum uh, of X as the minimum of the sectional curvatures of two planes pi in the tangent X space Tx M bar and in the same way, we define uh, K bar maximum. Let me put here K bar maximum is given as the maximum of the sectional curvatures of two planes 
pi in the tangent x space t x m bar. So, theorem. This theorem here is due to Hong Wei Shu and Huan Hu Gu, I guess. Uh, Hong Wei Shu and Huan Hu Gu. A uh, result of this year, 2010. And this theorem says the following. Here we are considering the dimension greater than or equal to 3. And the submanifold is complete. And now we are in the, uh, in the general case, not in the case where this, the curvature is constant. This theorem says the following. If the squared norm of the second fundamental form is strictly less than 8 over 3 times k bar minimum minus 1 over 4 k bar maximum plus n squared over n minus 1 times square of the mean curvature, then the submanifold is diffeomorphic to the Euclidean x space Rn or an spherical space form. Let me see something here. I choose these results here in the case of surfaces because uh, this inequality here appears. And of course, there are many results for hypersurfaces with dimension greater than or equal to 3, and inclusive results in the isometric sense. But here we choose only this results here because this, um, this inequality appears here too. And of course, this result here says that if this submanifold is imply connected, then the conclusion is it is diffeomorphic, diffeomorphic to the Euclidean X space or to the sphere as n. Okay. Uh, a theorem I want to discuss the proof here uh, is a theorem that improves this inequality here in the following sense. Here, uh, we are considering the dimension greater than or equal to 3. So, uh, the submanifold is complete. And if the squared norm of the second fundamental form is less than or equal to 8 over 3 times k bar minimum minus 1 over 4 k, k bar maximum plus n squared over n minus 1 times square of the mean curvature with a strictly inequality here at one point, result uh, in this direction here. With strictly inequality at one point. And the same conclusion of this result of Hong Wei and Gu. Then the submanifold is either diffeomorphic uh, to the Euclidean X space Rn 
or a spherical spacewalk. I want to discuss the proof of this result here. But before, I want to say some words about this inequality here. Remarks. Suppose that the codimension P of the submanifold is zero. That is to say, uh, suppose that the submanifold is the whole uh, manifold. In this case, uh, let me mark here with this uh, one, this, uh, this inequality here. This condition here means that uh, this manifold is weakly one for pinched in the pointwise sense. Um, one like that. This manifold is weakly one for pinched in the pointwise sense. What does this mean? This means that um, the sectional curvature of two planes, pi 1, is less than or equal to four times sectional curvatures of two planes pi 2. This is for all point x in the manifold and for all two planes pi 1 and pi 2 in the tangent x space Tx m. Let me mark here uh, with the number 2. And oh, excuse me? Oh, this, no, no, but uh, we will see that this condition here implied that uh, this condition here is no negative, yes. Uh, and now, I want to remember that Brando and Shane used this condition here to obtain a nice classification result in the compact case. Let me remember this. Uh, Breno and Schwen. A uh, result of 2008. And this date here is when they put the paper in the archive, I, I guess. And it says the following here. The dimension is greater than or equal to 4. And the manifold is compact. If this condition here is satisfied, and and the manifold is not uh, locally compact. Uh, locally symmetric space, then uh, this manifold is diffeomorphic uh, to an spherical space form. Space for. And the well known differentiable sphere theorem, which Brandon and Fein consider this condition here is strictly. Uh, let me remember this 
to Brandon Shane. Uh, in archive 2008. And let me write uh, in this way. If this condition 2 is strictly Then uh, this manifold is diffeomorphic to a spherical space form. And there is an interesting situation here that if we if we consider this manifold almost strictly one for pinched in the pointwise sense, then the same conclusion here of this sphere, differentiable sphere theorem. What does this mean? Almost strictly. One for pinched in the pointwise sense. This means that this condition here is satisfied for all points and all two planes, pi 1, pi 2. And this condition here is strictly at one point. So the same conclusion of this sphere theorem here. Uh, 2 is satisfied. And 2 is strictly at one point. You obtain uh, the same conclusion here. OK. Uh, I want to remember here one more theorem where this condition here appears. Uh, I raise it. Yes, yeah, yes, uh, positive here and positive here. Oh, oh, yes. This conclusion is uh, we can see with directly the proof of the theorem I will present here. And uh, in another way, too. Uh, this next theorem I want to remember here uh, is a result where the mean curvature flow for high um, co-dimensional sub-manifolds sub appears. And this theorem is due to Andrews and Baker. A result of this year, published in this year, but a result, I, I guess, of 2007. And it says the following here. We, we, are, we are considering the dimension greater than or equal to 2. And the submanifold is a submanifold of the Euclidean X space Rn plus P, compact. Uh, if the mean curvature is mm, distinct to zero at every where, and uh, the square root norm of the second fundamental form is less than or equal to c times square of the mean curvature, where this constant C satisfies the following inequality. C is less than or equal to 3, uh, 4, over 3 times N. If 
2 is less than or equal to n, and n is less than or equal to 4. And c is less than 1 over n minus 1 if the dimension is bigger than 4. Uh, then, conclusion. Uh, the mean curvature flow for high codimensional submanifolds exists uh, in a finite, or a finite, finite interval, say um, zero big S. Uh, and converse, converse to a point Q in the Euclidean X space Rn plus P. And this conclusion here is sufficient to obtain that this submanifold is diffeomorphic to the sphere because you renormalize the mean curvature flow and obtain that this renormalized mean curvature flow converges to this sphere. Okay. In the same finite, uh, small sense, yes. Uh, let me try to discuss the proof of the theorem I, I sit here. This proof I want to do in some steps. And the first step, um, step one, is the following. The sectional curvature of the submanifold is greater than or equal to 8 over 3. Uh, times k bar minimum minus 1 over 4 k bar maximum plus n square over n minus 1 times square of the mean curvature plus uh, the following sum alpha from n plus 1 to n plus p sum I, J, uh, I less than J, I, J distinct to 1, 4, uh, 1, 2, excuse me, of H alpha I, J square. This here is for all point X in the submanifold. For all two plane pi in the tangent x space T x m, and here we are uh, writing this two plane here is spanned by the vectors a1, a2, and these vectors are an orthonormal two-frame. Two-frame. OK, this is the first step. Um, the second step, uh, he, here we are considering the dimension greater than or equal to 3. And this, in the second step, we are considering the dimension greater than or equal to 4. It is the following. Uh, this manifold M G 
cross R2 has no negative isotropic curvature. What does this mean? I will use the equivalence due to Brando and Shen. This means that, uh, ah, let me mark this here uh, using three. Ah, one three, one three plus lambda square. Ah, one four, one four plus mi square. Ah, two three, two three plus lambda square, mi square. Ah, um, two four, two four minus two lambda mi. Ah, one two three four is greater than zero. This is uh, for all point x in the manifold, all uh, for orthonormal four frame, four frame A1, A2, A3, and A4. And for all lambda mi in the interval minus one, one. Okay, these two steps is sufficiently to prove the theorem. Let me say some consequences, cite some consequences of these two steps here before to discuss some steps, uh, the proof of these steps. Consequences of steps one and two. And the first consequence is the following. Uh, we suppose that the dimension is greater than or equal to three, and the manifold is complete and non-compact. Okay. From the step one, we see, we obtain that the sectional curvature is non-negative. And from the hypothesis in the theorem. Sectional curvature is no negative. And sectional curvature is positive at one point. This is from, from step one. And okay. Uh, So it follows from the perelman salt theorem that this manifold is diffeomorphic to the Euclidean X space. The, uh, suppose that. the Perelman's salt theorem says exactly this. If the manifold, complete and non-compact manifold, possesses non-negative sectional curvature and positive at one point, this manifold is diffeomorphic to the Euclidean X space. Okay, uh, now, uh, second consequence B. Uh, suppose that the dimension is equal to three and 
the manifold is compact. In the same way, from the step one and the, the inequality one, we have that the rich curvature is non-negative and the rich curvature is positive at one point. And now I will use a result due to Thierry Aubin that says the following. In this condition here, we can construct a metric age on the manifold with positive rich curvature. This con these two conditions here at the same time. Now, uh, we use the well-known classification result due to Richard Hamilton for three manifolds with positive rich curvature. This streaming fold is diffeomorphic to an spherical space form. Okay, we need to prove now the case when the dimension is greater than or equal to four and the submanifold is compact. And in this case, I will use the second step here. Let me start it now from here. So suppose dimension is greater than or equal to four and the submanifold is compact. <coughs> Consider then the Ricci flow the Ricci flow with initial metric G naught. Metric G naught. Uh, G naught is the metric on the manifold, on the submanifold. Rich flow, uh, partial G, partial P, minus two rich G, initial metric G naught, here in the interval zero big T, and here we are considering the metric G is this metric G naught. Okay, um, this condition here of step two and the result due to Simon Brandon and Richard Shen implies that uh, the manifold M GT cross R2 possesses no negative isotropic curvatures for all time t in this interval. Um, step four. And lies that uh, this manifold m g t times r square has no negative isotropic curvature for all 
safety in this interval. Okay, now this condition here is sufficient to obtain that the set of all orthonormal four frames uh, where this sum here is equal to zero for fixed lambda and mi is invariant under parallel transport. Let me uh, consider this sum here, three. Okay. So, the set um, F T lambda B fixed uh, of orthonormal four frames in the metric GT uh, AE AJ is delta IJ and this three is equal to zero is invariant under parallel transport. Okay, this is interesting because if for some t positive, uh, this here is t, uh, t positive, the manifold m g t cross r square does not have positive isotropic curvature, then you can construct an orthonormal four frame and one point such that this condition three is zero. And because of this invariance here, you can suppose that this point is exactly P naught where this condition here is strictly because in fact, this condition here will be strictly at one point from the condition one. You obtain that uh, this manifold is, has no negative isotropic curvature and one point positive isotropic curvature. That is to say, this sum here is positive in this point for all orthonormal four frame and all lambda and mi in this interval here. Okay, so you, if for all time in this interval, this manifold here does not possess positive isotropic curvature, then you construct a family of orthonormal for frame in, at this point P0, say, where this here is positive, in such way that three is zero. Then you go back along the rich flu to the metric G naught and construct a four orthonormal four frame at the point P naught such that uh, three is zero. But this is a contradiction because in the point P naught we will obtain that this Inequality here is positive for all point, uh, excuse me, for all orthonormal four frame. Okay? So th this is uh, the interesting fact here. Uh, from this invariance here, we, cons we can construct uh, for orthonormal, an orthonormal four frame in this point here, and two numbers lambda and mi in a such way this is zero, but this is a contradiction. So uh, this is sufficient to obtain that this manifold is diffeomorphic to an spherical space form. Such that uh, 
this manifold m g t let me put here uh, t naught times r square has positive isotropic curvature and now I use the uh, result which you brand in shame this result says the following if this condition here is satisfied and manifold dimension, dimension greater than or equal to 4 and uh, compact the normalized rich flow exists for all time in conviction to a metric with positive constant curvature then, uh, Brandon and Shane. implies that this manifold is diffeomorphic to a um, spherical space form. Okay, uh, we need to prove the step one and step two. I, I, I will use my notes here uh, in order to put only the principal points because the time, okay? Proof of steps one and two. Step one, uh, what we do uh, is extend uh, this orthonormal two frame to an orthonormal an plus b frame in a such way that the frame a1 an is tangent to tangent to m. We extend to this. Okay, um, the Gauss equation give us the sectional curvature k pi is equal to r one two one two plus sum uh, alpha from n plus one to n plus p of age one one alpha age alpha two two minus age alpha one two square okay here we can co consider the this inequality here and drop this and put k bar minimum and now we just look what is happening with this uh, sum here? We use the following two alpha, uh, H alpha, one, one, H alpha, two, two, is bigger than or equal to the following sum, um, I, uh, H I, I alpha square plus one over N minus one sum i from 1 to n h alpha i i square minus sum i distinct to j uh, let me distinct to j uh, until n over h i j alpha e square let me see here in my notes Distinct here and J from one and here is yes. This is a simple computation and we can divide it by two, the both sides, and sum in alpha and obtain uh, inequality involving this part here. And remember that this sum in alpha square 
is n squared times square of the mean curvature. And these two parts here, we use to control this sum here. Uh, let me, yeah, here is this, yeah. And we use this to obtain the first step, okay? Uh, in fact, we use only these two inequalities here. And I, I will not put any more details. And step four, just to finish, uh, step two, excuse me, uh, we use an inequality similar to this here. Uh, one, two, one, two, uh, one, three, one, three, plus lambda square, R, one, four, one, four, plus me square, R, two, three, two, three, plus lambda square, me square, R, two, four, two, four, minus two lambda me, R, one, two, three, four. We can prove that, uh, we want to prove that this sum here is no negative. We use the first step in, in all terms here. And an inequality like this to obtain that this is no negative. I just stop here because the time. Thank you for your attention.